Welcome, fiends of the pod. I'm your host, film critic and comedian Nate Wyckoff, and I want to tell you that you can go to cultandclassicfilms.com to buy exclusive ultra-low budget films directly from us. And I want to say this, money goes directly to the filmmakers with our films. We do not sell movies without paying the filmmakers. So you're doing good and you're getting an awesome product that is guaranteed to be so weird that all of your other friends will not believe it exists, but it does and you can get it. You can also subscribe and get them delivered to your door every month at a big discount. Make sure you like and subscribe, tell your friends, tell your enemies, and for every like, subscription, and sale we make, we're going to bring back exploitation. I promise. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Cult and Classic. <laughs> Welcome, friends and fiends, to another mini-sode of Cult and Classic podcast. These are the short episodes we bring you with various neat things every Friday between our main episodes, which air on Tuesdays, where we discuss a thematically linked pair of films, one mainstream and one cult. Today, I am excited to talk about an upcoming release from Unearthed Films. This is a new transfer of Olaf Ittenbach's No Reason from 2010. Um, if you're not familiar with Olaf Ittenbach, then you're probably not a gore hound, or at least not familiar with German gore films. And if you're a gore hound that's not familiar with German films, I don't know what kind of gore hound you are. Uh, now, Truth be told, I am not always a gore fan. Uh, I like gore. I like it from a technical uh, FX, practical effects standpoint. Um, but sometimes, like with, say, famous gore films, the first couple uh, Japanese guinea pig films, uh, from a technical standpoint, the gore is gruesome and well done, but there is no plot. It is uninteresting to me in that way. However, uh, they started to change as well, because how much can you do with gore? I mean, a lot, but... To be, to be interesting, they uh, branched out with some plot, like uh, the third film, Mermaid in a Manhole. Well, Olaf Ittenbach has sort of continued that trend of having plot-driven gore films. Uh, and this is what I think many people consider his intellectual opus. Uh, no reason it is uh, in the German language, um, but unearthed films, fantastic purveyors of uh, unusual cinema. Uh, of course, Gorehounds will know them well from many of their recent releases. They have released one of my all-time favorite films, although it is now out of print, and I'm begging for it to come back, which is the animated film Rock and Rule uh, with Lou Reed and Demi Harry vocals and Iggy Pop. It's, it's phenomenal. Check it out. We've mentioned it on this podcast before. But no reason is getting a brand new release from Unearthed Films uh, this May. May 11th, I believe, is currently what it's slated for uh, in 2021. Uh, why is this film worth checking out? Well, if you're a gore hound, there is some impressive gore on display here. But if you don't mind gore or you like gore and you want something behind the gore, no reason offers a really interesting allegorical take on... Um, the afterlife and the soul's progression. It's its sort of rooted in this, uh, a blending really of, of religious uh, thought on the afterlife. Um, I know it sounds weird to be discussing uh, afterlife and, and Western and Eastern religions in the context of a German gore film, but that's why Ittenbach's work is pretty interesting because the entire plot centers around Jennifer who at the beginning is going about her kind of shitty life uh, seems to be moving uh, soon with her husband and her young son Nico and things we assume are going to look up and of course because it's this kind of movie we expect them to go terribly wrong somehow well they do but not exactly in the way we expect uh, after encountering some nasty people uh, from her everyday life Jennifer wakes up uh, covered in blood, surrounded by severed, mutilated corpses, and she witnesses a what appears to be a man in a bizarre squid octopoidal cephalopodish uh, mask who is uh, telling her things, sort of cryptic messages about needing to cleanse herself and needing to be aware of what's real, and then showing her videos of savage uh, dismemberments and graphic mutilations of the, the crappy people that she's come in contact with uh, in the beginning of the film. Now, the real gore does not kick in until about 40 minutes in. Doesn't mean there isn't gore, doesn't mean that it's not interesting, it is. But I would, this is one of the reasons why I would qualify this as the thinking man's gore film, because there is a story and Ittenbach 
really wants to hammer the vibe, the atmosphere, the mood that he's setting down before getting to the gruesome stuff of which there is plenty. Now, it reminds me uh, as the film progresses uh, of uh, another recent film, Antrim. Uh, I believe it was subtitled The Most Dangerous Film Ever Made, something like that. Uh, the idea in that one is that some kids are digging a hole in the earth uh, and trying to get to the underworld to rescue their dog. And as they dig deeper, uh, they pass through these different levels, these different spheres uh, of, the, of the underworld that become more dangerous and release uh, different entities, which sort of start to inhabit their real woods area. Uh, in that case, you're never quite sure what's real. In this film, you also aren't quite sure what's real because this octopus headed guy is telling Jennifer that she doesn't have a child and that she needs to essentially wake up from her fantasy. Um, and that passing through these different um, chapters of this color theory anatomy book that she is being forced to read will bring her closer to a, a enlightenment, the white pure enlightenment uh, that is typically signified as as white in western world and uh they inbox does a really great job with lighting in this field the lighting is is front and center uh beyond even the graphical effects of gore of which there are things like face choppings um penises bitten off i have to say this year i have i have watched so many films of uh male genitalia being dismembered and eaten and various things between um uh, sex maniacs on wheels and uh, or sex terrorists on wheels and uh, recently did the fantastic human hibachi by Michael Cerrito. All these have genital mutilation, uh, but this one is probably the most realistic looking. And uh, part of it is because Ittenbach is really good at lighting his scenes. He uses color to, uh, to color filters and, and lighting to sort of show the different stages, stages of emotional um, progress that Jennifer is making through these terrible visions. At one point, she's in like a masochist club where people are being eviscerated. At another point, she's in uh, a, a, a sort of hell realm that's filled with these, these gory creatures, sort of like a, a low budget, but still respectable um, German Cenobites. Uh, there's actually many things that sort of are reminiscent of, of Clive Barker's Hellraiser um, series in this with motifs with sort of this octopoid man uh, leading this woman around with cryptic messages the af in, in the afterlife. Now, there is a framing story around this. In the beginning, we get what we think is Jennifer's real life. And at the end, we get what turns out to be her real life. Uh, and both are unsettling for different reasons. In the beginning, it's unsettling because we want, I think naturally, for the people that are being presented to us on screen for their lives to get better. And it's and it doesn't. And at the end, it's disturbing because the what we thought were real um, truths about our protagonists are not real. Uh, and the things that we believed about them are false. I don't want to spoil anything. I don't think this is a film where you can really spoil anything anyway, because the journey through these different stages and these different scenes of horror uh, and the dialogue are kind of important here. Now, if the idea of a very mental intellectual progress through uh, the stages of soul purification in a sort of uh, purgatory between life and death uh, does not interest you in your graphic, gory, bloody gore films, this isn't the film for you. But if you think that that sounds kind of fascinating, give it a watch. I would say it's worth it because uh, Ittenbach does a lot of things in this movie that are clearly intentional. And I'm big on intention. If you have a film that has no intention, like say, uh, beyond the surface one, like say uh, the original Guinea Pig is just to show graphic violence and be gross, fine. I have nothing against that, but it's interest wears thin after a pretty short time. But Olaf Ittenbach's film is about this character's uh, revelations about her true self and us as the audience are led behind her discovering with her the truth about her character. And the gore is used as an illustrative tool to uh, get us to the state of mind that Ittenbach wants us to be in in order to understand what he's trying to say. 
Now, the title for this film, No Reason, sort of implies a nihilistic view, um, like the, the tragedies and, and things that are happening in this movie are for no reason. I don't think that's accurate. I actually am not sure 100% what this title really means because um, the film does, as I said, have a plot and it does have an arc. Uh, and it is interesting in an intellectual pursuit. I've used that term a lot, but that's because the movie relies heavily on tricking your brain into, into different sort of red herrings uh, of, of guesses about what's happening by having these long cryptic messages. Now, that could sound boring to some, and some might find it a little dull, but I don't think that that is a, a valid take if you're interested in an experiential movie. This is a movie where the experience is sort of what you get. Um, if it sounds like I'm being aloof about the description, it's because I think a lot of stuff in this movie has to be seen to be understood. It is atmosphere heavy. The colors matter. The gore is extreme. Heads are split open. Um, you know, uh, lots of faces are pulled apart. There's some just lots of blood. Um, and I also should mention the cast of this film, all of which really seem to go 110% to lend the on-screen happenings uh, veneer of reality. Um, Irene Holtzfertner plays Jennifer. Uh, she is nude, 100% nude throughout just about the entire film, which it's, in a, it's a very non-sexual presentation. Uh, and I respect that because when we are nude, what are we when it's not sexual? We are vulnerable. And that's the uh, intent is to present uh, Jennifer's character as vulnerable in this experience that she's going through. As I said, imagery heavy. Uh, if you're familiar with German cinema, even classic German cinema, you know that it has a very, traditionally, it has a very nihilistic, bleak worldview. This is, I would say it's not nihilistic, um, depending on your choices. And this character's choices may reveal it to be nihilistic, but that's a, uh, an individualized path. So I actually found this uh, movie, and that's getting back to the title, perhaps a little uh, off brand for what the message was that I took from it. But again, it's a gore film with a plot, guys. If you like extreme gore, if you're impressed by that technical stuff, and you like good cinematography, um, and you're not concerned with maybe a slower pace than a, an action-filled gore flick, give Olaf Ittenbach's No Reason a try. It's worth waiting for Unearthed Films release in uh, 2021 in May. I can't stress that enough. Uh, the For being a relatively low budget affair, it looks stunning. There are some intercut um, bits of footage or photographs um, that are maybe a, sort of reveal some of the low budget workings, but for the vast majority of the film, it is a highly well-produced movie. And this new transfer is, it's so much better. It is the antithesis of a bootleg. It is sort of a boot up, um, if that makes any sense to you guys. And I think if you've seen previous iterations of this movie, that will make sense to you. Uh, the other thing I'll say, just to be nitpicky, the only thing that reveals some budgetary restrictions, aside from those little cuts of, of photographs and things uh, throughout the movie that are, are rare occurrences, is the sound effects. There are sound effects that are, are, are sound fairly stock, um, but because most of the movie is dialogue and ambient folly work, I don't think it matters. I only probably notice it as a reviewer who checks for these things. I don't think it ha uh, hampers the experience at all. Uh, on the whole, I think Ittenbach created something that looks much, much, much more expensive than it actually was. Uh, and Unearthed Films has done a great job really tweaking that um, to be fantastic on a 4K display, totally beautiful, um, which is something interesting to say for a movie that's so gruesome. Like I said, Gorehounds will be happy, but only if you make it through the beginning. I will 
bet though that you are engaged by that 40 minute mark. And so the gore will be uh, welcome and you won't have been bored. If you make it to that point, you're going to be engaged enough to follow through to see um, the truth be revealed in no reason. Not a film for everyone. Like I said, very gruesome, lots of nudity. It's, it's an uncomfortable film. This is not a happy film. This is a German film based on the idea that what you do matters uh, beyond life. So if that sounds like an interesting trip to you, take it. Uh, no reason from Unearthed Films. The May 11th release date. You can pre order it now. I believe you can go on Grindhouse Video or uh, uh, one of my personal favorites, Diabolic DVD. Um, check them out and uh, pre order this if it sounds up your alley. And if nothing else, the cover for this release is super freaking cool. S very old school 80s John Carpenter movie vibes uh, with the octopus head wrapped around Jennifer and, and all the gruesome people standing in the background. Totally worth it. So thanks Unearth Films for letting me review this. Uh, I look forward to the release and uh, I look forward to more releases of gore films that have uh, something beyond the visual flair um, that these creators uh, who, who work in special effects like Olaf Ittenbach uh, bring to movies because there is a story that you can get across and still have this gruesome fun that we in the gore world like so much. Uh, to play us out, as always, is The Chud with All About Evil. I want to say, guys, if you like what we do here at Cult and Classic Podcast, please leave a review at uh, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Google Podcasts. These are what help bring us to new people. You should tell all your friends, subscribe, all that jazz. And feel free to write us at cultandclassicpodcast at gmail.com. Visit us at cultandclassicpodcast.com. And have a great day. We'll see you on Tuesday. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Cult and Classic Podcast. This podcast is important to me, but what's more important are the rights, privileges, and freedom from violence of everyone in this country and in this world. And that means supporting Black Lives Matter. If you'd like to make a donation, please go ahead and visit cultandclassicpodcast.com where we have a list of places you can donate and help out. And please stay safe.